Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. Today's topic is artificial intelligence, chat GPT, machine learning, and all that kind of stuff that's got everyone sort of a little bit excited and a little bit worried. Uh, and my guest is Murray Simpson, who's uh, who's a technology expert, uh, um, spent some time in Ottawa, spent some time in Silicon Valley. He's now back in Toronto, and he's running a business in the area. We're not going to focus on his business today. We're going to sort of elevate, and because uh, we've had a chance to talk about his business before, and we'll undoubtedly talk about it again. But we're going to sure. elevate today and talk a little bit about what artificial intelligence is, what chat GPT and things like it are. <laughs> Should we be excited? Should we be scared? Murray Simpson, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian, for having me. Great topic and 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 pretty much up to the minute. No question. So let's take a step back and uh, and tell everyone, if you could, what Chat GPT and 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 machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, um, things like that, really are. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, it would it surprise people to find out that it's really nothing new. Um, yes. and, and I think this is this is the really important backdrop for the discussion, because as people can see, I'm in the center of downtown Toronto. Um, AI, as we currently know it, as we're speaking about it today, these large language models, this semantic type thinking, this pattern recognition was invented just down the street, about a kilometer away at the University of Toronto. And ever since the creation of that first sort of experimental model that that's sort of the ghost in the machine, we've been talking about the emergence of intelligence from a computer. Uh, and, and I'll even suggest 25 years before that, Alan Turing um, made these very grand proclamations about the fact that eventually computers were going to become indistinguishable from uh, a human being. And this was called the Turing test. Um, this isn't new, Brian. Um, it's not new technology. It's just the latest version of what started with the transistor um, and really ended up at, in a world now where there's so many transistors packed into such tiny little devices that uh, people now can't distinguish between sort of fantasy and reality. There's a really good old saying that if 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 you know if, if something is sufficiently advanced, it's pretty much indistinguishable from magic. And the reality of it is, I think once again we're finding ourselves in a world where people are um, perhaps personifying the technology. And at the moment we personify a technology, we become afraid of it. Okay, um, but, so but, but what is AI? AI Bernie. is just advanced computing. Okay, but. Let me challenge you on that, if I could. So, you know, the sense that I have, the sense that I think most people have, is that computers uh, in the past did what human beings told them to do. Maybe a little bit quicker, a little bit maybe faster, a little bit with maybe a lot more memory, um, uh, you know, did the math right uh, yeah. rather than uh, sometimes wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But the sense is that chat GPT and artificial intelligence actually thinks for itself. Yeah, that 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 definitely is... Look, if you compare ChatGPT's capabilities to a, some people, you're going to find a lot of similarities between the output, quote unquote, okay? But ChatGPT can, in point of fact, do things that seem like they are individual, cho independent choices made by ChatGPT in, in the manner that I would say, watch, Brian, I'm going to walk away from the camera because I chose to, and I came back. Now, what caused that? This is really important. In my case, we don't yet know the answer because I'm a human being. But in a computer's case, if the computer walks off screen like this and then comes back, um, I can tell you as a nerd exactly why and how that happened. Okay, tell me so why, in point exactly of fact, why that happened. It's not accurate to say the computer isn't following our instructions. It is. But if it's language... Uh... Uh, recognition, it's because it got this idea because a whole bunch of other people walked away from the camera in the past. And that is that is, that is certainly part of it. We can even go a step further. The, 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 the sort of large language models, remember, are pretty much patterns that have been recognized and designed to sort of act and behave like humans. So we've sort of, we've built in some of the logic. Now, let's be clear about this logic because this is important. 
a, a, a GP, a chat GPT system could, in point of fact, if you gave it an instruction that said, um, solve disease for humanity, something really grand, in theory, it would follow its instructions to the absolute limit. And that means never stop. OK, a computer doesn't stop until it's told to stop. This is this is really where rubber hits the road. OK, a human has this moral filter through which we look at things. A computer doesn't. What's scary about a computer is that it's not morally thinking. So in point of fact, if I connect a computer that's smart, like ChatGPT, to the outside world through the Internet, ChatGPT can actually hire somebody in a foreign country to go uh, put an ad up in a downtown, say, Shanghai. Is that intelligent or is that just following an instruction? I don't know. You tell me. If it goes and hires a, a intelligent person in Shanghai uh, to uh, to develop a, a cure to something or other that you uh, instructed it to do initially, and it keeps on thinking and doing and thinking and doing and thinking and yes. doing forever, um, it's become... A thought and intelligence. Well, and, and, own, and this, it? Was, this is a really good conversation. Be, do you remember the there was a movie in, in the 90s, I think it was called The Bicentennial Man. Um, and, and it was this concept of an android that had started out as sort of a data in Star Trek. OK, but it, over time became so <laughs> sentient, as it were, that human beings developed relationships with this AI, this bot, this robot. Um, and yet it was totally different. Computers and humans are totally different, though the outputs may seem the same. And, and that's likely the, the fact that we built it. So, you know, we, our technology reflects us. The fact is, it's still a computer following instructions. And, and the art is making sure those instructions are correct, because a computer that has no limits is in point of fact a threat in the same way that say atomic energy is a threat okay but you can't stop this train now that it's left you don't think we can stop it there's been you know i don't know what it was 50 or something uh, uh major people within the the, the 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 computer business that all signed a a letter saying take a pause it, it I'll, I'll point to the fact that um Take a pause has been the order of the day every time a new large technology came out. I'll, I'll tell you that, for instance, in the time of the telegraph, um, when the telegraph came along, remember, this was tra this was the, the theories back then were time is compressing. Distance means nothing. If you if you read the concerns from the newspapers in the 19th century, they're utterly identical to the concerns now written out about um, th this latest and greatest technology. Th the truth is, they say- But, the but in those, you know, I've heard you talk about this before, whether it be the telegram or the telephone or the fax machine or the Gutenberg press or, you know, a myriad of other technological advances. All of those were people communicating with people via the computer or via some sort of vehicle that made their communication more quickly. This yes. isn't that. We're not communicating with each other. We're communicating with a computer who's thinking like a whole bunch of other people and 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 responding back. You know, I've had people call me up and say, I asked ChatGPT about something or other, and it was really good. It was unbelievable what ChatGPT had to say and, and sure. speak back to me. Yeah, it it look, it ChatGPT is just the latest technology tool that human beings developed. I, I guess fire would be considered the first one. The, the, the most interesting thing about technology is that the really big technologies that arrive and have a consequence on human civilizations are the ones that are so far out there relative to what is current. So, for instance, we talk about the telegraph being no big deal, OK? Then it's no big deal compared to AI. We've got to put the telegraph into context there was no light there was no electricity there was uh the dark cities distance took months to send a letter say halfway across the united states um to cross an ocean was worse than crossing to mars today you know you, you really have to think about that and all of a sudden this new technology comes along and instantaneously i can speak to my mother in 
I don't know, London from New York, where the first connection was. And it, or that was trans, uh, the transoceanic, but it continentally, the same sort of deal. Indianapolis and New York are instantaneous. The consequence that had on society was so gigantic that people were so afraid that I would argue that that leap was probably bigger than what we're seeing today, because at least today we think about technology as, you know, we have Star Trek and Star Wars. This stuff doesn't surprise us. Back then, the telegraph made old ladies then, faint. Then, 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 Murray, why are all these uh, smart technology uh, executives t saying, take a step back? This is different. Take a pause. Um, you know, uh, attention, uh, it, 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 look, it, I'm not suggesting that AI doesn't have a dark side. It, please understand that's, that's not my thesis. Okay. AI is a more powerful technology than nuclear power. Okay. It, it, in terms of its, its consequences for the really world. nuclear power can power things for good and destroy the world. You yes, it AI certainly can. can and AI can, can do that? it in 10 minutes. How can it, AI... AI can destroy the world faster than atomic weapons ever will? How can AI and... destroy the world in 10 minutes? Well, it as I said, it can take over anything that it wants to do. If the GP, if a chat GPT large language model is attached to the internet and you give it the power to make calls outside of its domain, then it can do anything it wants. It can stop an elevator, it can crash a car, it can drop an airplane out of the sky, and it can do it all at once if you really want to think about it in the worst possible way. But that's the wrong way to think about it. When we look at technology and we say- God, that really is scary. It is. It, it, but, but would it surprise you to find out that I can do all of that from my laptop today? Yes. Okay. And this is the point. The, everything I'm talking about is not because of AI. AI is only using the things we've already built to achieve those things. The only thing AI is doing is following instructions. So it's really important. To so why can't I tell AI to, to uh, have every Russian airplane on top of uh, Ukraine destroy itself? Well, it, 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 you know, and, and here we come to cybersecurity. So, you know, you, 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 cybersecurity is the number one, should be the number one goal of every CEO on the planet and leader of organization. Cybersecurity is the single most important thing you can do to protect yourself against all of this nonsense. And so at the end of the day, it, they could, but they're not likely to do it because there's an opposing force that's thinking about it and putting things in place to make sure it happens. We're having a really interesting conversation with Murray Simpson tonight about uh, chat GPT, machine learning, uh, advanced language models, whatever that is. And we're going to come back and we're going to go through some of this terminology and, and try to help us all understand it a little bit. Uh, because what uh, Murray is saying is that this could be an incredible force for good, but it could also be an incredible uh, force for bad. And so we need to make sure we get the one and not the other. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be back in just two minutes. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Sagan and 60. I'm having an interesting conversation tonight with Murray Simpson about advanced uh, machine learning or whatever you called it, uh, lang uh, language learning, um, uh, language models, chat GPT, machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, blah, 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 whatever else uh, you're going to describe it. Let's, uh, and my guest is Murray Simpson, who's a really smart guy and a nice guy too, um, but maybe a little bit too much of a nerd. Who knows? We'll find out. Um, Murray, let's let's go through. Take that as a compliment, Brian. Let's take a step back and just try to go through some of these words and terminologies to make sure we all understand. Okay, you used right. earlier today the word sentient. What's yes. that mean? Um, it is sentience is what you would describe a living, acting creature like us to be. We are sentient. The act of being human is itself an expression of sentience. So sentience is probably sentience is probably best expressed by self-awareness, awareness of the world outside, sophisticated, intelligent, self-aware, conscious being of some shape or description. And so you might describe a uh, ET uh, in the movie as sentient, but different than human. Is an animal sentient? Um, in, increasingly, uh, people believe they are, and in fact. AI is going to be the thing that'll probably make that distinction. I, you know, we're reasonably certain that cetaceans, for instance, um, are, are are about as intelligent as we are, but we can't yet crack the language code. 
AI will allow us to speak to dolphins. And so at the end of the day, you know, the, the answer to these questions are coming, but the answer is probably at some level. What is sentience exactly? It, do you have to be able to do calculus to be sentient or is it sufficient to care for your young? You know, the, these, I, I, I dare say that the final anthropocentric um, selfishness of humanity is probably going to come apart because of AI. We are not the only intelligent, sentient beings on Earth, let alone this universe. And so in, in the end, I think we're going to have a very robust discussion about what sentience means over the next little while. What is a, and let me make sure I get the terminology right, a large language model? Yeah, so a large, okay, it, 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 let's, it, large is the, the key operator here. If you take a corpus of 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 knowledge, okay, um, you end up with an expertise. So, for instance, you studied finance, okay. As a CPA, you studied a corpus of knowledge related to your craft and skill, okay. Yeah, just to be exact, uh, in case uh, anyone ever quotes this, I don't have a CPA. I've got an MBA, but an MBA. So, please but continue. The point is you studied finance in your MBA, and you understand it, and it's grand. The 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 sort of thesis I'm trying to say is there's a corpus of knowledge that goes along with earning an MBA. OK, if you go a step further and you say all of those degrees that are possible in a university, now you have a larger corpus of knowledge. And if you go further and say all of the knowledge in history, you have a larger and larger and larger corpus of knowledge. So if you take the totality of human information. That's roughly what a large language model encompasses. <laughs> now, they started out. Years and years and years ago at the at U of T with very small data sets. Okay, now what's a data set? It's just a database contains information. We all know that. Think of a large language model as the biggest database you've ever seen in the history of the planet that encompasses everything that's out there and has the ability to go to third party data sets and bring all of that stuff back together and allow you to talk to it to ask questions using natural language. So if you're, let's say Brian Crombie in front of me right now um, is chat GPT, I can say, Brian, can you tell me where Murray Simpson lives? And you would answer back, Murray Simpson lives in Toronto. Now, how would he get that information? You, Brian Crombie, Mr. AI, Mr. Lar Mr. Chat GPT. Well, he has information within his trillions of indexed pieces of information, and he also has access to the internet, which he can pull up-to-date information on me and spit it out to you in a simple process that says, Murray lives in TL. Okay, what is artificial intelligence and how does it differ from machine learning? So it, the, the, these terms get thrown around a lot. Machine learning is, is sort of the science of how you interrogate the data and the tools you use to do that interrogating. So there's all kinds of code that you would write, software code that you write, that will access the databases I talked about in the large language models. Okay, And inside of a large language model, you have machine learning code and you have data. And the combination of those two outputs something that we today call chat GPT, which is one form of artificial intelligence. Um, it's also the most likely form of what we call artificial general intelligence, which is sort of the next question. Artificial general intelligence is Brian Crombie is an example of an artificial general intelligence. So is Murray Simser. I'm so not artificial, I'm real. So are you. At least I think That's you are. Right. That's correct. So how can you be artificial if I think you're real? Well, then you can drop the, the this this is where we're coming to. Okay. Oh my God. You're you're the term GPT, artificial is I think it's loaded. You've created this vision of loading trips to I think it's just intelligence. It could be artificial or real or made of organic material or made of something else. Okay, we so can have machine learning. Machine learning is the way that a machine learns uh, by going through data sets, and therefore updating the data set with new information. So, what happens when you and learn the result of that is artificial intelligence? So, it takes its results into account and continues 
learning. Just like you learned how in your MBA how to market and finance and do all these sort of things, you had to get a test and score and learn and read books and make mistakes. And it does all of those things. So if you want to know the best sort of way to think about how the, the, the sort of general artificial intelligences work, think of how a toddler learns. Okay. The best example I can give you is there was there was a, a walking robot. It was a stick robot, a very simple piece of code, and they wanted to teach it how to walk. So it had joints. Okay. And it had musculature and it had sort of code to tell you how those muscles works and how those joints work. But it did not have the emergent property of being able to walk. So it had to learn how to walk in the computer. And what did it do? Well, it moved the leg and it fell over. And it went, oh, okay, so that didn't work. I'll try another one. It moved another leg and it fell over and it did this repeatedly a thousand times. Finally, it knew how to stand up. And then it did that a thousand more times and it finally learned how to walk forward one step. And it kept going and kept going and repeating and repeating and repeating. Now remember, computers work at a speed that is astonishingly rapid. So this toddler will become an adult in almost instantaneously, okay? Because it'll run through trillions and trillions of calculations all at once. And finally, this thing will learn to walk. And it wasn't me who taught it to walk. It was me who told it, you got to walk. And it goes out and uses the information that's out there to best learn how to do that. And then it learns from its mistakes. It's an astonishing feat of computing, but it is not alive. But that sounds like pretty much how a toddler learns how to walk. And so why is it not alive and a human is alive? It's I, I, I think that the th this is sort of the comment I made before. I think the concept of artificial intelligence is going to go away eventually. OK, intelligence is probably the better way to describe it, to your point. There really is no difference. OK, I'm actually sitting here talking to you through a computer interface. OK, now, if you looked like you and somehow I had done a huge sort of deal and produced an avatar of you that had all of your smarts and could replicate almost all of you, and I did that for long enough, Brian Crombie could live forever. So let's say we physically die at a certain age as we get older, and but we could remain digitally just because of the fact that we recorded all of our, say, um, the talks and personalities, and people could have a relationship with us after we're gone. Is that still us? So I interviewed a young lady from Niagara Falls uh, who yes. is a, um, a producer, executive director, and a film producer, and uh, and and it's now uh, in movie theaters around uh, Canada and yep. at uh, at festivals. Uh, her name was April Mullen, and her book is called Simulant. And uh, and what it was, I don't know if you've seen this or heard of it. Uh, she created a uh, a robot uh, that was embedded with all the memories of her husband, um, yeah. and uh, her husband passed away, and she had the ability to turn it on uh, at the time, and her husband was alive, absolutely even he was dead, because this robot had all the memories and thought and was an artificial intelligence, but thought reacted, etc. And because of good robot uh, manufacturing at the time, looked like her husband. And acted like her husband. So is that robot alive? Is her husband alive? It, 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 I think you're going to, you know, the old Star Trek Borg, the bad guys? Yeah. It, Borg was sort of the first time that the, the artificial intelligence entered the consciousness of people in this sort of bionic world, six million dollar man kind of thing. But the, 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 the nature of the beast is I don't know if alive or dead or computer or human really matters. I, I, I really think that what we're going to find more than likely is that our intelligence, you know how we, we, we used to be the center of the universe and the, the earth was the center of the thing. And, and slowly we've peeled back the onion of our anthropocentricity. Um, the fact of the matter is, we're eventually going to peel back the concept that somehow our intelligence is soul and God based and all of these sorts of things. And that doesn't negate the value of religion. I'm simply saying that our intelligence is nothing but an emergent property. Um, our feelings and morality are nothing but emergent properties out of our, our. What do you mean emergent of, property? It, an emergent property is it, you, you, you. So, for instance, um, your body is made up of cells. Okay. And those trillions of them. 
And there's all kinds of differentiated cells that make up different pockets of material, the bone and organs and all of this sort of stuff. But on their own, all of that stuff is identical to, say, any animal. And yet they're not having radio shows and shooting rockets up into space and all the rest. I thought of our brain was substantially larger for the size of the rest of our body. Oh, okay, but but if that's if that's the case, you know, whales should be the most intelligent creatures on the face of the earth, and likely are. It it, it there you know the, the the sort of thesis though is it emerged because we have the biggest brains is your thesis. Yes, but it's the same synaptic synaptic material. It's it's the same gray matter. It's the same structure. And yet we are the only ones that we know of um, so far that have expressed what we call this intelligence. And so I theorize that it's nothing but an emergent property that means that you're, you are your cells, you are your bones, you are your organs, but you're also more than the sum of your parts. In the same way that a city like Toronto is not just the people who live in it. I mean, look, we've got buildings, we've got roads, we have cars, we have all of these different differentiated things. But Toronto, as a 10 million person city with with Mississauga as the fourth largest city in the GT in, in Canada, the, these things are more than just a bunch of people. The city of Toronto, the city of Mississauga, the city of Ottawa, the city, all the great cities of Ontario have this emergent property that has nothing to do with the individual constituent parts. And, and so is human. Uh, it's so is a computer. We're now putting together a computer with an with the equivalent number of units of information in its brain as a human brain. We're, we're approaching that. OK, we're, we're starting to get the same sort of level as what's in here. And we're starting to see at a very basic level properties emerge that are substantially similar to that of human. But they are not yet and will never likely be for a very, very long time a Brian Crombie uh, or the like. We're going to take a break and come back with Murray Semser in just two minutes. We're talking about... Uh... Artificial intelligence, machine learning, chat GPT, and uh, is this good or bad? Stay with us, everyone. Back in two. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. My guest tonight is Murray Simpson. Uh, he uh, is a really smart technology guy. He's running a technology company right now. We've uh, had a show uh, with him before on his uh, company. We're not going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk, uh, we are talking about artificial intelligence, chat GPT and the like, and whether it's something that is scary or good. Um, I asked you uh, uh, during the break, uh, Murray, if you knew of an author by the name of Yuval Nora Harari, you said you didn't. He's written I two didn't. really interesting books. One was called Sapiens and another one was Homo Dea, Dea, Dua, Duas. Um, uh, president, uh, former President Obama called them two of the most important books he's ever read. Uh, and Sapiens is a history of, of humanity, um, a history of the past, and uh, Homo Deus, he describes as a brief history of tomorrow. And in Sapiens, he talks about how we've become who we are. And one of the things that's interesting is he talks about how ne Neanderthals and Sapiens at one point in time were pretty similar. But for some reason, Sapiens became the the entity, the race, the 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 whatever uh, that ended up having this emergent properties, I guess, to use your language, that ended up being successful. In sure. Deus, he says that he's worried it might happen again. Yeah. That 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 human beings with medical technology and uh, artificial intelligence um, might create godlike creatures, particularly some of the rich that are able to embed themselves with medical technology, uh, artificial eyes, limbs, hearts, whatever, and artificial intelligence, such that they treat the rest of humanity like sapiens treated Neanderthals. Are we creating a situation where artificial intelligence, where chat GPT, where robots, where whatever you want to talk about it, are actually better than humans, more powerful than humans, smarter than humans? It, it, well, the answer is yes. And, and, and I don't know that, I, I think sort of, I don't make the next leap though, is that bad necessarily? And allow me to explain. Um, the, the, the industrial revolution 
okay, was was sort of the first time um, at, at a scale that was up to that point never seen before, um, replacing humans with 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 devices or smarts or machines. I'll call it intellectual property. OK, for fun to say somebody invented something novel, the cotton gin, um, you know, a, a great digger that was steam powered, steam powered ships, um, airplanes, railroads, all of these things. And and the exact concern that is that it, that is leveled sort of today at artificial intelligence was leveled then about how these machines were taking the jobs of people and all the, sort of the rest of the thing. The fact of the matter is that we can build machines to be better than humans at almost any functional skill, okay? Humans will always be worse at it than a machine. But humans have something machines will never have, and that is families and love and society and caring. And it's our job as the humans who are using all of these tools to make sure that everybody benefits, um, that we love and we care about um, on a daily basis to participate in these things. And so you have to then ask, how do we make sure this stuff doesn't harm everybody? And our answer is democrat liberal democratic capitalism, which is, remember, this is my end of the world, that this democracy business the best way to guarantee that the spoils don't just go to the few are a liberal democratic capital system. And, 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 and I'm going to make this argument in a really simple way. It's the only system that ever has guaranteed that people became wealthier and non-poor and lived longer. So up to about 1899, nobody lived past sort of 30, 40, 50 was really old. And if you got beyond that, uh, you were lucky. Um, the fact of the matter is you were also dirt poor up until that point. By dirt poor, I mean abject poverty, famine most of the time and, you know, freezing and they, no medicines, nothing. All of a sudden, capitalism and the Industrial Revolution came along and we distributed that power. Now, remember that power, the same thing, oh, the Dickens novels and all the rest of it. This was the original, oh, all of this power is going to the few, the robber barons. But in, but in the end, this is the society that we produce. OK, and Canada and the great democracies are the best expression that humanity has ever produced so far. And I have great confidence that our liberal democratic societies where no one person controls it, um, where no one person dictates what's going to be done with it, uh, like in other places in the world. Uh, I think our I think our our system will distribute the spoils properly. And I think the most likely outcome is universal income writ large. Full stop. You said computers can't love, they can't have families. If they've got the ability to, 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 to read, to learn from the whole history of knowledge, there's so much of knowledge that is about the power of love, the power of families, the power of empathy, the power of charity, the power of, of social interaction. You don't think they'll learn that and want to create it for themselves? Nope. And I'll tell you why. Uh, one word, hormones. OK, so let's be crystal clear. In our lifetime, love was wrecked for me, OK, because I learned what love was. I used to think it was this this ephemeral thing that 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 existed in the world and it came from something godlike and all this business. But it, you know what? It's oxytocin. OK, so the a computer until such time that we start to build organic material into the computers, which, by the way, is 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 still at least five years away <laughs> when we'll have another conversation that will really freak you out because now we can integrate hormones into hormonal attachment into a computing device. Now imagine a computing device guided not just by its logic, but by its oxytocin attachment to Brian Crombie. What would it not do to protect Brian Crombie? <laughs> or if Brian Crombie pissed her off or it off, what to do to destroy Brian Crombie? This is the point. The humans have done more damage than anything in human history. OK, we are the most lethal, the most damaging, the most dangerous. I'm not fussed about computers. Uh, they will do more better. They will do more good than we have ever done. <laughs> Tell us. Um... If you could about uh, the the different uh, the different tools, so you know Google has got one, Microsoft has got one. Uh, I yeah. presume you've you've tested them all. Yeah. So um, Microsoft just bought OpenAI, uh, which, which 
is substantially similar to Bard with Google and and a rate. Look, there, 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 there's two things people need to know. The game of the large language model is over. Okay. Windows and Apple and and the like are chosen. Okay. It it literally is going to be Google versus Microsoft versus Apple versus Facebook. They all have them. Okay. These large group, these large tech companies are in the best position to do the two things required to win in that space. A, aggregate the sum total of human information, which is cloud and all the rest of this stuff. And the second piece is to develop these extremely complex um, and sophisticated coding models that allow them to understand that data and pattern recognize. Okay. And then learn from what they've, they, they, they've sort of recognized. In the end, in the end, what we have is something that um, approaches a. Um, it, it it it. I'm sorry about the phone. Just give me one second. Is I, I'm wondering if one is better than the other, or are they all very similar? Well, they're they're identical to each other. That's the point. Okay, so there there's no there's no fundamental difference between the model. The models are the same. Okay, they're large data models that include lots of information. The innovation is in what they can recognize. So do you remember in the matrix where they said, okay, we're going to upload Kung Fu into Keanu Reeves and we're going to upload, uh, I don't know, intelligence about this. And, you know, it's the, the, the really interesting work from now on is not the large language models, is not the competing BARD versus OpenAI and all of ChatGPT. It's not that anymore. It's what you do with that that is the future. And the more things you can do with that, that's where you can compete. So let's, for instance, there's a whole bunch of applications. You remember how we had software on top of Windows, software on top of Apple? Well, right. it's the same sort of deal. Now, the, the, the sort of foundation's done. Bard, uh, ChatGPT, all these sort of things are, are baked into our lives. Siri, all Google Assist, this is all part of the same thing. Okay. It's what you do with it. I can turn my lights on in my apartment by talking to my Google. Okay. My Google home. I and still I haven't can, figured out how to do that. Well, it, it, but, but again, I'm, ha I come with tech support as your friends. So you can, you can call me anytime and, and I work for coffee. So if you have good coffee, I will come and set your home network up. It's easy. But Deal. the idea is once it's done, you don't have to know. You can just say, turn the lights on or better, I want the evening setting and it turns on all the devices and changes all the stuff and makes everything work. Uh, but the fact is that's the application. Okay. It's in the application citizen, for instance, as we've talked about in the past is an application that allows us to express specific specialization about democracy, the will of the people. Okay. That's one application of the huge, large language models, which by the way, we're going to leverage. We have our own language. We have our own machine learning tools. We have our own chatbot, but we leverage chat GPT or BARD or, you know, all of these different technologies that are out there. But in our case, it allows us now imagine the benefit of that. I can now accurately express the voice of the people in a way that nobody ever has been able to do. OK, using this thing called Democracy GPT. That's totally cool. But you could also use it to understand the will of the people to manipulate them. So, you know, it's the age old question. It's a double edged sword. So, you know, the reality is this business of let's pause and stop. You can't do that. OK, would you have paused and stopped atomic research in the lead up to World War II? Okay, like it, it, it's a um, maybe not, uh, but I would have, have certainly paused. Us. I certainly would have paused before we dropped the bomb in 45. That's a different question. But the research and the ability to have the choice to have dropped the bomb was what was key. Okay, I, 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 I won't get into the sort of kettle of fish that, that is nuclear weapons. I think nuclear weapons are important. Okay, they're, they're awful. It, it the fact is. If your opponent is going to use a technology, so let's go back even further because it's less emotional, okay? Let's go back to castles and Constantinople. Castles were the way to fortify a city and protect yourself until when? 
until Constantinople fell in the mid 15th century because the bombards were brought, cannons about this big, okay, that blew holes in the wall. Walls became irrelevant. You cannot protect yourself by barricading yourself in walls because the technology will simply overwhelm you, will simply overwhelm you whether you like it or not. No one and told Donald Trump that. Isolation is never a solution. No one told Donald Trump that. <laughs> Good point. Okay, so you don't think we should pause. You think that sort of the, the horse is out of the gate. Um, should we have regulation we certainly we have, should have regulation how do and we let me give you an example okay power electricity we'll recall that at the very beginning you know down the way here we've got the adam beck statue okay on university avenue here uh downtown toronto he created the 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 the, the ac power plant at niagara falls Okay, Adam Beck one, Adam Beck two, uh, and across the way was was Nikola Tesla's um, uh, setup. Okay, the 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 sort of thesis here is electricity at the beginning of say the the late nineteenth century is roughly where we are with AI right now. Okay. We don't know what the standards are. We don't know what a plug on the wall looks like. We don't know how to keep people safe. We don't know how to do any of that. OK, just like atomic energy, Mary Curry, when she was sitting playing with radium and radiation stuff, she thought she was doing all the good science, but she killed herself. OK, we, we every technology has a dark side and AI is the single most pe powerful technology that's ever been created in the history of the planet. It makes everything that came before seem like the number one compared to the number infinity. That's the scale of this, and I don't think people understand it. So just like electricity, transformational technologies have transformational risks. And so you need to have governance above this. Now, I don't mean governments need to come in and heavy-handed regulate. You can't do this, you can't do that. But there should be, for instance, in governments around the world, active permanent committees, for instance, in the government that are continuously evaluating this. There should be schools focused on this at universities. There should be endowments made into these places. The structures of society need to start to build their knowledge base about AI. It's only once we have our knowledge base about AI that we can regulate it. Because whatever we do today will be entirely wrong. Okay, imagine trying to regulate the internet back in the early days, 1994. Like, the regulation would have been irrelevant. Back then, people were saying, oh, well, there, this is the wild west of information. Let's block websites. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Innovation is really important to our way of life. Liberal democratic capitalism requires innovation be allowed to take place. But it, and, and so what we need are good government regulations. We need good, strong interfaces between industry and governments. And we need a thoughtful conversation that's going to be a multi-decade conversation to build regulations as they become rational to put into place. But I could never have imagined a world safe like this for electricity, okay? In our homes, in our cities, all over the place, and nobody dies from it every year now. And the reason for that largely is a, a, a whole of society effort to make sure that it was safe. We're chatting tonight with Murray Simpson about artificial intelligence, chat GPT, and the like. We're going to take a break and come back with some concluding comments in just two minutes. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. I'm a little bit scared and a little bit excited about the conversation I'm having tonight with Murray Simpson about uh, artificial intelligence, chat GPT, uh, advanced uh, large language uh, models, etc. cetera. Um, Murray, just a few minutes ago, you said this was the most important, powerful technological advance, technological innovation in history. Yes. More than electricity, more than the wheel, more than the printing press, more than everything. Um, that's scary. I didn't, you know, I thought this was like, uh, you know, Google coming out with something that was more powerful, a better search engine that didn't exist before. Um, and, and you're, you're scaring me in that regard. 
Um, electricity changed the world. Wheels changed the world. Fire changed the world. Printing press changed the world. How do you think ChatGPT and the like is going to change the world? So I, I think ChatGPT is going to change how we interface with uh, our cloud computing environments, meaning how we access and search for information. But I don't think ChatGPT is the ultimate evolution of this thing. So ChatGPT is by definition interfacing with a human life with a human life like experience. Okay, but AI writ large has applications way beyond a chatbot. And 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 I know that it sounds scary to say this is the biggest and most powerful technology that's ever been created, and, and I mean it. And, and, and if I were to compare it to anything that went before, I would say this is orders, several orders of magnitude more important than anything in the past. And, and like 10 orders of magnitude, 20, 30. The impact of this is going to be so consequential um, that it's going to improve our lives several orders of magnitude more than, say, the Industrial Revolution did, which tripled our longevity and made our wealth explode for the first time in history. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me give you some theories that are currently being looked at, and these are not blue sky. These are real. How about longevity? to hundreds of years. And I don't mean by uploading yourself into the cloud, okay? Like that that's the ultimate end. I but can have my physical body of uh, the 30s, uh, of, of my 30s, fine, but not of my 70s, thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. So what if, what if I told you that it's highly likely that right now, how old are you? you? Let's say you're 60. So let's say you're 60 years old and in 30 years, you'll actually look like you're 30 and feel like you're 30. Does that I'll sound a promising future? Pick me. Well, this is it. AI promises that kind of a future. AI promises a world without disease. AI promises a world where you can actively choose what your uh, your, your your sort of physical characteristics are. We can improve the brain's output and function. You know, Gattaca, do you remember this movie where people were sort of, oh, I'd like a child with uh, no diseases and uh, no glasses required. And it, the promise is so great that um, it, it, it Jean-Luc Picard in Star Trek said it best. It's going to make the economics of the future somewhat different. And it's going to allow, I think, for the first time in history, for people to actually focus on improving themselves rather than worrying about rising up the Maslow curve. Murray Simpson, thanks for chatting with us. Uh, I think we should check back in with you in a few months to see how this most important technology in the history of the world uh, has changed things. And uh, and let me ask you one last question. If, if you're just a regular person listening tonight, what yeah. should you do? Should you just get out there and give it a try and see what... ChatGPT says back? Yeah, it, it, let me offer two things. Um, the first is, don't worry so much about it. You're going to hear a lot of crazy making online. And today, um, people are pontificating to get bloody attention. Okay, so it's a whole worst case scenario and all the rest of this stuff. Don't be so worried about it. We'll be fine. That's the first thing. But the second thing is, yes, go use it. It's free and it's extraordinarily powerful and helpful. Go to Bing, go to Google search, go to all of these different technologies and use them. Because once you do, you're going to find your life right away today is immeasurably changed. The things that it can do to help you, the things that you can get done that you would have otherwise had to have spent tons of money on before um, it, it, you will, be, will astonish you. And I think that if people start to see the benefit and the beauty and the incredible creativity that humanity um, gave to this world, and I, I'm Captain Canada and Captain Toronto from this great city. I know you're in Saga there, but, you know, AIs from here. This is one of humanity's great gifts to posterity. And that's what our generation gave to the world. And 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 I'm, uh, I got to tell you, I'm optimistic about our uh, our odds. Murray Simpson, thanks so much for joining us tonight and telling us a little bit about uh, your attitudes toward chat GPT, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, et cetera. I'm going to leave you all with one uh, final thought. 
Uh, and that is that I think Murray might be actually right. Uh, and, and, you know, I did a bunch of studies on social capital. And it's interesting, a lot of the technologies that Murray's talked about were scary initially. And, and people thought, for an example, that the telephone would break apart societies, break apart relationships, break apart friendships. And what it found is that it actually cemented them. And people actually ended up talking to people uh, more often than they would have normally talked to them because it was easier to do so. And, and they talked to people from farther away. Uh, than they did too. And, and you know, Facebook and, and Instagram, same thing. And I think a lot of us, you know, particularly during COVID came to that realization that uh, that we stayed in touch with family from far away uh, and, and cemented relationships uh, in a greater degree than we would have otherwise been able to, particularly when we weren't able to travel to meet them. Um, some people think that took went too far and too much <laughs> of the information was public and they cut back on some of that, but that's sort of a different story. And so I guess what I'm thinking is that I think that this is going to help us become even smarter. I and so. uh, and I think that if something can help us become even smarter, make better decisions, make a better world, um, and even if it can create um, a, a, a wonderful sonnet, which is one of the criticisms, is that it creates a, a sonnet faster and better than uh, real people can. Um, maybe that's good. That's our show for tonight, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I remind you I'm on every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 AM. You can stream me online even from downtown Toronto uh, at uh, www.saga960am.ca. And you can get all my podcasts and video casts on briancrombie.com. My podcasts are on lots of different podcast uh, uh, vehicles. And my uh, my videos are on all the social media uh, channels, including YouTube. Um, I'm not yet on ChatGPT. I got to figure out how I can, I can, how I can do that. Stay with us, everybody. Come back tomorrow. Good night.